Hey, Bruce Naylor here, your boomer consumer, your not audiophile, audiophile. And today we're looking at the Bose 301 direct reflecting speakers. And I have my B&H affiliate link down below if you're interested in more information. These are kind of hard to come by right now. A lot of places are sold out. Now you might have heard that Bose actually stands for buy other stereo equipment or no highs, no lows, must be Bose. Audiophiles love to rag on these things all the time, on anything from Bose. Maybe not their uh, noise canceling heads on, uh, headphones so much, but on their loudspeakers. Little history with me and Bose. Go, I, I've had Bose speakers since, oh my gosh, I'm gonna say 1990. And it was the Bose 901s and I love those speakers, but they were quite finicky to work with and a lot of audiophiles absolutely hated them. Bose uh, was founded by Amar Bose, who went to a lot of concerts, symphonies, that kind of thing, classical music, and his idea was to recreate that symphony experience in your living room by using what he, I think he called it psychoacoustics, which was the study of sound and how it bounces off walls and, and how it surrounds us when, the, uh, when everything's set up properly. And this is a long line of direct reflecting speakers. In fact, I think they're the only ones I could find for sale on the Bose website at this time. And they used to have many, many different models, but today it is the 301s. These are much different than your typical bookshelf speaker. Uh, these are designed to be positioned horizontally rather than vertically. Most uh, bookshelf speakers tend to be rectangular and you have your woofer and a tweeter and you get a pair of them and then you kind of sit in between them, kind of maybe tow them in and find that sweet spot. Okay, these are designed to lay horizontally. You get a eight inch long throw woofer, a two inch uh, tweeter on the front, and then there is a two inch tweeter on the rear. And you'll notice that it's uh, positioned, the tweeter is off axis. So this is actually the left speaker of the pair and then uh, I'll show you the, the, uh, the rear of this here in a, in a few minutes. But the idea is that these will create a soundstage much, much larger than what your typical bookshelf speaker would do. Now these retail for $328 for a pair of two, and they are available, they will handle four to eight ohms impedance on here as well. Available in just black only. Used to be, I think, like a cherry wood in black. Now they're just black only. They come in with automatic circuit protection. There is a grill cover. Reach over and get that. That just snaps on and snaps off. So you have the grill cover as well. On the bottom are some rubber feet. And then I bought the optional stands for them as well. I think they were around 80 bucks. By the way, they're absolutely gorgeous stands. Okay, so these measure about 9.8 inches in height, 14.3 inches in width, and then another 9.8 inches in depth. So that's 248.9 millimeters by 363.2 millimeters by 248.9 millimeters. There you go. They weigh about 13 pounds. As far as the construction is concerned, they feel pretty solid, maybe just a bit hollow on the inside, but definitely they're, they're just as well made, I think, as most speakers in this price range, and uh, maybe even a little bit better. One of the most important specs for a speaker, and Bose notoriously hides their specifications, is the sensitivity of the speaker measured in decibels, and that's basically how much sound you can produce with one watt of power at one meter from the speaker. I will tell you this, I'm currently using a NAD 316B V2 40 watt amplifier and that drives these things absolutely no problem. Now one thing Bose talks about in their uh, marketing material in, is what they call a spatial dispersion speaker lens. I don't know if they're referring to the way this tweeter is positioned and designed or whether they're talking about the imaging. I don't know. I couldn't find any information on that. What I can tell you is that they do pre create a soundstage much larger than your typical bookshelf speaker would. So I have these connected to an NAD 316BV2 integrated amplifier, and I'm just gonna give you a quick sample 
of some royalty-free music. So here's the back side of the 301, it is marked as left. They do use spring-loaded clips as opposed to some proper binding posts. I wish they would improve that. Here's the other tweeter, and you'll see the direction. Again, it's designed to reflect off walls. Bose recommends, I believe, keeping these about 18 inches away from the walls. And then you have these ports on here for base and to help air move through the system. So here's my take on the 301s. First off, I think these are ideal for smaller rooms. I believe in buying gear that fits a purpose and these are designed for a smaller room rather than having the large floor standing speakers. And they do a fantastic job of surrounding you with sound if you have them set up properly. Now, even though it has an eight inch long throw woofer, the base isn't that incredibly deep, so if you're looking for that earth-shaking base, these speakers are not going to do the trick for you unless you were to couple these with a subwoofer to make up any difference there that may not be adequate in your mind. The type of music you listen to has a lot of bearing on how well you perceive these speakers to perform. Now, I happen to like smooth jazz, I like some classical music. I actually have a variety of musical tastes. Classic rock from the 70s, 80s, and even early 90s. When it comes to jazz, the sound of the horns, right, your, your sax, just fantastic with these, just super sharp and crisp. Uh, in classical music, the violins, the timbre of the violins sounds fantastic. The bass is adequate for that genre of music if you get into music that has a lot of deep bass. Again, you might want to supplement these with a subwoofer. Certainly, I think that for most general listening purposes, these are a great all-around bookshelf speaker. They give you such a large field of sound. One thing about your typical uh, bookshelf speaker setup is that you have this sweet spot where you're kind of in the middle and you have the speakers towed in. You're not going to have that so much with these because, again, they're designed to disperse sound and reflect, and, and that's what they do. And so you don't really have that sweet spot so much, but rather more of an all-encompassing kind of sound. And they don't distort. Uh, you can really drive these up there and they will sound good and clear. The 301s are also excellent for just putting on background music and enjoying it all day long. They can certainly do that. I've heard other reviewers say, well, these are great for bars and cafes, etc., where you're not listening to music critically. And I call absolute BS on that. 
these are absolutely fine for it. Now, will they satisfy the kind of audiophile who goes, yes, Biff, I could, under, I could hear the timbre of the tenor's voice in that virtuoso. No, <laughs> that, that's, that's not me. That's, that's not probably a lot of my audience either. But to listen to Dylan, uh, the Beatles, the Bee Gees, uh, Aerosmith, Kansas, um, whether you're listening to Mozart, whether you're listening to Herbie Hancock, these are going to sound really, really, really good. They're a bit unusual. I like unusual things. And I think that if you owned a pair, you would enjoy them yourself. And that is kind of my review of the Bose 301s. I've had them for about a month now. Could not be more pleased. I run them every day. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.